Hi, this is Vale Johnson. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. Hi everyone, John Liebman here. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. We're coming to you today from the Notehead booth, our own booth at the 2019 Summer NAMM Show. Did I almost say Anaheim, California? Nashville, Tennessee. This is the, the other NAMM Show with our very, very, very old friend, Vale Johnson. What's happening, Vale? Hey, how's it going? I'm doing good. What's happening? I don't know. Everything's happening. We're having fun. Having a good time. Keep going. You're doing great. Yeah, thank you. We did a few interviews together, always fun. Uh, I was telling your wife earlier, out of uh, 750 interviews we've done with bass players and guitar players, there's only one that we included outtakes for, and that was that was yours, because you, you had us laughing so hard, but now we're, we're very serious. It was a different time. Uh, you know, I've become a much more mature person now, and so there'll be none of that, none of that ballyhoo or chicanery. Yes, yes, no tomfoolery. That's right. All right. Well, getting serious for a moment anyway. Uh, I think the last interview we did was actually in Machnoikirchen, Germany. That's right. That's right. Gesundheit, by the way. Yes. Thank you. That's also <laughs> German. But uh, yeah, the Warwick, the Warwick thing, that was so much fun. I love that. Yeah. That was, yeah. That, that's always a good time. I went to that three times. But... What I was trying to set up for there, we, we did a couple interviews uh, before that. Anyway, we got the whole story of your upbringing and the Kenny G thing and uh, whatever else we talked about. Vale Johnson, those interviews are up there on ForBassPlayersOnly.com. Vale is V-A-I-L, right? Right, Like V-Ale, but I mean, ale like hurt yeah. ale, not, right. not like beer ale. Exactly. Yes. Thank you. Yes. And I think your new record wa had come out, the third one, yeah, the Americana one, where you were crooning and yeah, singing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, actually, that's the sixth one. You missed the first three. Because you only sent me. Th I thought yeah, Come yeah. Together was your first one, wasn't it? No, 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 no. There were three before that. The first one was called Terminator. That was back in 91 or 2. And then uh, Says Who, and then uh, Underground, and then... Come together. Yeah. Okay. Well, underground's so. a good title for that because I'm not yeah, familiar yeah. with it. So exactly. there you go. Right. Anyway, it's in my backyard. Yeah. Uh, come together, flow, and then the Americana one. What is that it called? The Seventh Sun. Seventh That's Sun. yeah. Right. So what was uh, that long intro was uh, trying to ask you? What I think it was. It was over. It was about four years ago I since our last interview. So. What I'm trying to say is, what's new? What have you been up to? What's going on? Tell us what's been keeping you busy. Well, the main thing I'm doing now, I'm doing my solo show. Uh, in addition, I'm still doing you know sideman gigs like the Kenny G thing and that, and that's all and that's all good. But my solo show, uh, I call it Around the World in 40 Years, and what it is is I am uh, playing music and telling stories about all the different artists that I've worked with in, over the last 40 years, and it's it's quite. Uh, uh, disparate group of people and drop a few names well I'll, I'll say this I think that I'm pretty confident in saying that I'm the only person in the world that has toured with both David Cassidy and Gil Scott Heron at the same that's time the breadth, not at the same time but I mean it's that's that's the the, the breadth of uh, of experiences that I've had and we so, and so you had to fill Danny Bonaducci's shoes as a bass player I did. I wore the wig, and I uh, and I played standing on my knees so that it wouldn't throw him off. But <laughs> he was uh, he was a DJ in Detroit for a short while years ago, and he must have lived near me. I bumped into him at a drugstore one time, oh, that's and we were talking. He's just a regular guy. Yeah. Well, his normal persona, yeah. but some of the stories he, t he has told on the radio and other places yeah. are uh, very interesting. Hit up well, I, can, I can tell you a story about Danny that I heard from, from David Cassidy, and he said David had to keep reminding him, because Danny didn't play bass or any instrument, of course, you know, and D David had to keep reminding him not to strum like this, like a guitar, and Danny would keep doing this, and... And what was he ten years old? Yeah, and Danny and David would keep saying, no, no, with your fingers, with your fingers like that. But yeah, all the different artists in in between those two poles would be, you know, there's Herbie Hancock and there's Kenny G, or there's Stevie Nicks and there's James Ingram, Patty Austin, or Edgar Winter, or Kebmo, you know, is more recently doing that. So it's like a ton of different 
styles and genres and but the 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 thing that brings them all together is just the love of music and how music can connect people that would not ordinarily uh, have contact necessarily it can be from different parts of the world different cultures and and the cool thing about music for me is that it breaks down those barriers and when you're playing music together then you know you're communicating in that way and I really I really enjoy that so that's my show I, well, what I, I was what I was thinking of asking you what well, who would come to a show like that what would they want to hear because it sounds like you cover everything so who are you targeting everyone I'm targeting uh, it's pretty much gonna be you know anybody over I mean, like the last great gig I did here in town at the Nashville Jazz Workshop, I mean, the audience was like from f age 40 to 75. Okay. And it's like anybody who is interested in any kind of music, because it's not genre specific, but what it is about is about music, playing music, and how it is to play with different people and in 80 countries around the world, and different cultures, different languages, and you have all these artificial barriers that music kind of breaks through and so that's what it is and I play the music and it's and it's I do it completely solo I tell people I tell people that I'm, I'm like a male version of Ed Sheeran you know it's with a looper and a, <laughs> I just had to think about that yeah. for a, 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 I do a looper a mic and a bass and I do everything it's I do okay. that all that stuff I, I had the privilege of interviewing Greg Lake several oh, years ago awesome. and and he yeah. had something similar really he had a he that. had a uh, yes a one-man show that he did but he was telling me a story he, he taught me an expression there i was doing everything going about you know happy as larry you know i, I said <laughs> I love what that. happy as larry <laughs> i'm sorry to interrupt but this yeah. is good go on yeah well that's it that's what i that's so that's what i'm doing okay and well i'm enjoying i'm really enjoying doing that i'm traveling around uh we we bought uh our cat and RV, so he can come with us. But he lets I have to drive because you know no, no opposable thumbs. He can't like do the shifter and stuff. But Denise and I, we go in the RV and uh, with our cat Cornelius, and we travel around. We travel around the country doing my solo show, and I'm just I'm, I'm loving that. It's really fun. Just one other question about the show. I, I would come to see it not just for the the cross section of music, but you know. Bass geeks, bass nerds. Do you do a lot of acrobatics and stuff, you know, for the bass players too? Do you work that into your show because you're really good at it? Well, thanks. You, you know, my philosophy about playing bass and it's been like this for the longest time is that I'm not trying to play bass so much as I'm trying to play music. I'm I hope you're music. listening, folks, because this is important stuff. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to play music, and I'm playing it on a bass guitar. And I don't, it's, it's just four string, just a regular bass, the Kubicki, you know, and I, it's an unusual bass, but it is still just a four string, regular tuning. You know, these guys that are playing six and seven string basses, to me, I mean, I don't know, it's just like a low guitar or something. I don't know. It's not, but I'm playing four string bass guitar, but I'm making an entire band sound out of it. You know, drums, keyboards, guitar, I emulate those sounds with different ways to manipulate the strings and and using your hands in every conceivable way to to uh, make sounds out of a bass and that's what i like doing that's what i'm having fun with okay D does that involve a lot of effects and gear no. and no 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 effects no 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 i got a looper i play stuff i record it but it's all this it's all done with my hands there i don't have any uh, there are no crutches there's no net there's no nothing it's all done with this and, and I use a pick and you can do a lot of different things with a pick you can play just the way you all the music you can get out of a four string bass is what I'm trying to present to people and it's not just okay it's not that that and it's also not just which I'm really sick of too because anybody can do it it doesn't mean anything do it in the in the context of a song and have it mean something within a, within a song with a melody and things like that and then do it all on a bass. And to me, that's impressive. So that's what I'm shooting for. Gotcha. Tell me a little bit more about your equipment. I was talking to Mike Tobias and I know he's very proud to have you as uh, uh, somebody who likes it. My wife on questions about my equipment, she's more intimately uh, knowledgeable of that. Uh, well, that'll be for our other website. Oh, my gear. oh yeah, bass gear. Got it. Um, so bass gear, you didn't think this interview was going to go that smoothly, did you? With so you, I never know. Gear. No, Mike Tobias made me a fantastic five-string 
uh, precision bass that I've been using a lot on the Kenny G gig. It's just great. It's just a punchy, really, it's just a clear, punchy, huge sound just all by itself. Just one pickup, passive, and man, it sounds fantastic. Uh, Saratoga? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's one that he, I, I think he had his hands in this one, you know, and in, but a Saratoga model, yeah. And um, man, it's, it's fantastic. I just love it. Five string is a little bit of a departure for you, isn't it? I've been playing the five for a long time, you know, on uh, you know on sideman gigs, because that's, you know, a lot of guys really like the extra range down there, and and, and so I don't, I don't mind playing it when it comes to my personal thing and my solo stuff. I always play the four, but the but the five, it's like yeah, you got the extra range, sure. That's yeah. it. And these, range is fun. You can't assume anymore. I assume it's the low B is the fifth string. Right, right. Yeah, okay. just B E A D on there. Yeah. What kind of strings do you play? I am using the MJC Ironworks strings. The new guy, Mike Connolly, is making these fantastic strings yep. with the old machines from, I don't know how old they are, 40 years old maybe or something. They're, and, you know, putting things together with his hands on these machines. It's not a computer-aided, right. you know, automated thing. And he gave me a set of the strings, and I thought they were fantastic. It's like the Dean Markley's were in the 80s, uh -huh. which for me were great. And then they got not great. And man, I just love them. They were just super consistent, and and the, the response is just unparalleled for me. I just so it's like going back to like the original Blue Steels in a way, you know, from way back then. Yeah. yeah. And then it's, I just when I played them, I said this just this reminds me of what I was this give me what I was missing in the, in the modern ones that it's low B included, right? Yeah, yeah, with the yeah. low B, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, it's just really balanced well. It's great. Yeah. I mean, the low B sounds as good as the other four is what I meant. What about uh, amplification? Well, you know, for my solo thing, I've gone back to using a component system. Uh, you know, like a small PA, basically. You know, either a bi or a tri uh system. You know, with 15s, which I, which I love the sound of, you know, direct front-loaded 15s. And uh, which are not, like, technically subs because they have a lot of, I still have a lot of mid. It's not... It's not a subwoofer 15. You know, I use just the front-loaded, ported cabinet, you know, and it gets a lot of the mids up to up in the five 600 range, you know, it's the really, which is an important part for me to get the clarity when I'm playing chords on a bass, and I need to have that clarity. So, yeah, I was using the component thing. I haven't found, an, you know, any uh, modern amps that that will do what I'm, what I'm looking for, you know, in a louder setting are you playing the valve train amps anymore the valve train thing i use in my studio and and it's fantastic for that now it's just a 50 watt head you know and 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 that you know when i try to play that at a, on a live gig it's just not designed for that and it's just it won't do it if i had 10 of them you know that probably on the serious side it probably need at least that many you know but uh you know the valve train the tone is fantastic but it's a studio and a low volume thing you know yeah, so for certain gigs, it would be good, or depending on the player and the ambiance, the atmosphere, and all that other stuff. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you, I want to talk a little bit more about technique. I mean, you, you made a pretty good point there, and I want to know if you can maybe elaborate on something a little bit. In addition to the, the interviews for which we have been known for uh, over 10 years now, about 600 or so plus bass interviews, plus yeah. a whole bunch of guitar interviews. But uh, on For Bass Players Only, we've also migrated over all the content from my instructional site, formerly known as johnleapman.com. So we're getting more and more people that come to For Bass Players Only, not only for the interviews and the features and the other things that we have, but specifically for the bass instruction as well. We've got about 150, 160 courses right now, and we're in uh, pretty much every state in the U.S. and almost 50 countries worldwide, and we're growing pretty fast. So I wanted to take this opportunity to see what words of wisdom you can impart to people who want to learn to play bass. A lot of them may be a little bit older than your typical beginner student, maybe 50s, 60s, retired people. I've always wanted to do this. Now I've got the time. Not necessarily aspiring to be a rock star. Yeah, right, maybe, right. who knows, but in right. that spirit, is there anything you can share with somebody who just wants to learn to play the bass and have fun and get reasonably good at it? Right, what, right. what, what do they need to know? What should they not assume or overlook? Uh, no. I got nothing. I got I got nothing. No, I think all I, I'll, 
really all I can say is what, what worked for me. And, I, you know, I, I, learned, I learned by listening to the records, hearing that sound, and trying to figure out for myself. You know, this was obviously long before, you know, even videos. You know, is this was before uh, you know Betamax. You know, even and but you hear the sound on the on the record. So now you, you put on a CD and you, and you listen and you hear that sound, and you get your bass and you if you like that sound and you want to figure out how to do that, I can't really tell anybody how to do it. Figure it out for yourself, and that's and I think that that's what led to me discovering all these different sounds and get out of a bass. It's like you sit there. And somebody doesn't show you, okay, do this and that and that. Just get it, make the sound with your fingers, and you'll 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 hear all the diff- all the ways to not make that sound, and eventually you'll get it. And you're like, oh, that's the technique. It's kind of a trial and error thing, and I think that's really important. A lot of people want a shortcut, and I don't think there is one for for, for getting a sound. And and the sound really is the end product of of whatever training you're doing, whatever theory you have, and whatever instruction you have, the sound is the end result. So what, is, what does it sound like? And that's why getting I'm fingering with the uh, cable here. But there's, different, there's a, infinite ways of playing the instrument. And for you, you got to figure out how you can make that sound. It's not the way I'm going to make it. It's not the way I do it. Because I've shown people, I've, you know, when people ask me, you know, how do you do that? And I'll say... That's it. Okay, slow it down. Okay, I'll show them how to do it. And they try to do it, and they're just, I can't do that. I said, well, you're not going to do it the way I do it, you know, and, I, and, and I'm not doing it the way this guy does it. you got to figure it out for yourself. That's where the work comes in. That's why it's not easy. There's no easy way to do it. There really isn't. I, I sat down with Billy Sheehan in Germany for for oh, about yeah, yeah, for yeah. about an hour and a half, right, right. and he was showing me stuff. He says, "That's how I do it, but you can figure out a way to do it." And every time I pick up the bass, I learn something new and I try something different. But when you say sound, you don't mean just tone; you mean articulation and attack and all of those things yes. as well. Yeah. Yes. I mean, because the end result of whatever it is you're trying to do, what does it sound like? When is it coming back to you out of, out of, out of the amp? You know. Or in your headphones, what's what? What does it sound like? So, yeah, tone is a t- tiny part of that. It's mostly here, and it's like you say, and it's even something for me. You know, like note duration is a big thing for me. I pay a huge amount of attention to that when I'm playing, and that and that creates a lot of space in a tune, and there and yet, you know, for and that's something you know for the people that are doing it for a living or want to do it for a living, and so when that's critical. You know, there's nothing worse than a than for me than a bass player that just plays long, just leaves notes hanging yeah. constantly, and they're changing around. You know, but there's a specific time where it where it sounds really cool to just let go and 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 stop the note, and that actually creates another note. Just the lack of bass happening is another note. You're not playing it, you know. But there are times where it's appropriate and desirable to let the note ring all the way. And that's that's the thing. When you have contrast within a song, then all of a sudden it really means something. But it it doesn't make any sense if you're just, if you you played, if every note you played was just a quarter note, you know, throughout the whole song. Okay, that's kind of boring. Or if every note is a whole note. But you got to find the spots where here's the whole note works, and then, you, you know, you actually lift... A song like going into a pre-chorus, you lift the song by playing less. Yeah. A lot of the time, you know, you play a shorter note, you know, or more notes, but that are short, you know. And it's just there's all these different ideas that that can help help the song sound better and give it motion and uh, and, and have the feel. And it's just so much more to it than just boom, boom. Or dum 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 dum. You know what I'm saying? Dum 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 dum. It's like, wow, wow, I'm so bored. Who are you calling dum? Dum 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 dum. You know, this is the longest conversation I've ever had with you without laughing uncontrollably. Bass is serious business. Yeah. Well, I have a lot to say about about music. Yeah. That's why I'm doing my own thing. Nobody else will work with me. No, I actually. Part of it was I, I started getting frustrated with with finding people that, that you could depend on to 
to be you know in your in your group that's that's not a major touring act and people that could you know kind of play with you and not against you know uh, at you, yeah, playing at <laughs> you <laughs> too bad you couldn't call like a bunch of bass players because you know we're reliable <laughs> hey that's I, the thing yeah, yeah I, exactly I, I, I may have asked you this in some of our previous interviews or not. I don't remember, so I'm going to ask you again now. Or ask you maybe again, maybe not again, but I'm going to ask you. What would you be if you weren't a bass player? Something outside of music. I just remember I did, an, I did I ask you. you ask yeah, so okay. I'll come up with something else. Uh, well, how about something truthful? Something truthful. I was truthful before about being a motorcycle racer. I would, I would have wanted to do that. You know, right. Yeah, so professional athletics, was, that was something I was looking at when I was in high school and then once I started playing, you know, college ball and got injured badly, then that decided for me. What sport was that? You know, well, in football, but I was, but I also played basketball and I wrestled and I was, played lacrosse and I was, and uh, so there's at the University of Washington. Yeah, but you got the stuff. sports mixed up. You were playing basketball and you tackled the guy from the other team, right? Well, I did play basketball that way too. Yeah, that was rough. But um, yeah, I would probably, you know, and actually, I would have gone in. I would have gone into the military right out of high school. On our side, I hope. Yeah, next, next, uh, no, Ukraine. Yeah, yeah, because the Ukraine girls really knock me out. You know, get it? Yeah. Beatles reference, danger. Um, I just saw that movie yesterday, uh, last week. Oh, you know, really? Yeah. Is it good? Uh, yeah, it was okay. I didn't love it, but I liked it. But you love the Beatles? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Me too. No, I probably would have gone in the military. And if, if I hadn't already been chopping away at my knees and stuff before, you know, I probably would have done it. My next older brother went in the Marines, and I thought, wow, that looks really cool. I think I could have done that. He went into what? The Marines. He went in the Marine Corps. I thought you so, said brain surgery. <laughs> yeah, he went into brain surgery and then went in the Marines, and he was perfect for it. So, so <laughs> no, I think I, I, I could have probably had a career in the military. I think I could have done that. Yeah. Okay, I'm sure you would have been good at whatever you chose, but... Glad you chose the base. When you talk yeah. about sports, I still don't understand why ESPN views poker as a sport. But anyway, right, right, right. <laughs> well, Vale, it's yeah. great catching up with you. Good luck oh, on the, the new right. project and everything else that I'm you're. Sure. Yeah, let us know when you come through our town and their town. Is there a place where the tour schedule might be published or available or just? Uh, oh yeah, probably on ValeJohnson.com. Vale Johnson, V-A-I-L Johnson dot yeah, com. On location with V-A-I-L Johnson at the Nodehead booth at the 2019 Summer NAM show, you're watching the number one site for exclusive one-on-one -on -one bass player interviews, and now more and more people's favorite site for learning bass online for bassplayersonly.com. I'm John Liebman. Thanks for checking it out. Bye. Why? So, John, tell me, what's it like being around so many uh, really cool musician type people? Well, Vale, I will tell you this much. It's been a very exciting time here at the show. I'm really enjoying uh, meeting new, some new people, and it's a lovely thing. Okay. Cut the crap. What's it really like? And what was it like hanging out with Geezer Butler? Is it true that you got a lap dance from him? <laughs> well, I declare I can neither confirm or deny that, but it's pretty funny. I, I love it. We'll talk about this later. Thank you. I think that's it. All I think right. I'm done. Time to get serious. What are the odds? You're going to have that in your mouth while you're talking to me? You know, that's not the first time I've heard that. <laughs> I think my medications were off. Oh, oh. <laughs> you're like the robot on Lost in Space. <laughs> Hi, everyone. John Liebman here. You're watching... For Don't look at me. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I didn't do anything. I did nothing. Would you like a mint? <laughs>